it's been millennia, but the time has come. This ancient Egyptian sarcophagus has been hidden away for untold centuries, but it's about to be brought into the light once again. A team of experts have been exploring a necropolis near Cairo, and their efforts are finally about to bear fruit. This discovery will truly break new ground. And it all begins with a lone archaeologist descending into the dark. The archaeologist gets lowered down into a concealed Egyptian chamber and makes a dream discovery. The sarcophagus these experts have come across is something to behold. It's adorned with lines and shapes, etched all over its surfaces. Whoever was laid to rest here was clearly someone of great importance. Not just anybody gets a burial as elaborate as this one, after all. This find is just the latest revelation in a wider archaeological investigation that's been taking place of late. It was discovered hidden away inside a tomb, which itself was only found about a year previously. Located in a place called Saqqara, this chamber is an intriguing space, its walls decorated with intricate murals. Saqqara is a necropolis in essence, a cemetery containing extensive and complex tombs in Giza. It was once a part of Memphis, which used to be the capital of ancient Egypt. Saqqara has been designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, thanks to the incredible monuments and graves found there. The specific tomb the archaeologists recently discovered at Saqqara is just one of many located there. Like several of the others, this one has a grand entrance bearing depictions of its inhabitants' life etched in stone. Inside are two chambers, the first of which is fairly plain. The second, though, is far more decorative and lavish. Another notable feature of the tomb is a series of stone blocks, which are thought to have once supported segments of the ceiling and some walls. Time, however, has worn away at these structures, and they have since collapsed. Still, one wall remains intact and bears a painting showing people offering up gifts. One rather gory aspect of the scene shows a young cow being killed. Blocks with etchings on their surface have also been discovered, as have a series of Assyrian columns. These significant stone structures specifically reference the deity Osiris, Egyptian god of the deceased. Intended as a link between the earth and the sky, they were seen by the structure's builders as a means of providing a bridge between the living world and the afterlife. Dr. Ola El Agassi was heading this archaeological investigation, and she has spoken to the press about the significance of the Assyrian columns. The expert, the leading professor in her field at Cairo University, explained, Assyrian columns are a symbol. The ancient Egyptians believed that they would grow to reach the heavens, and through this, Ra, the god of the heavens, would make contact with Osiris, the god of the underworld, and their realms would be connected. The tomb and its contents trace back to the time of Ramesses II, who was the pharaoh of Egypt in the 13th century BC. His reign was the second longest of all the pharaohs, and a tremendously successful one, too. His tenure marked the high point of the New Kingdom period. Ramus's tenure was marked by a construction boom, with cities and monuments springing up rapidly. For the 60 or so years he sat on the throne, Egypt expanded greatly. He was in charge in wartime, too, achieving some important victories and securing his place in history as one of ancient Egypt's most important figures. The tomb recently uncovered by archaeologists was linked with Ramus's II, but not directly. It didn't actually belong to the leader himself, but rather to someone in his inner circle. This was someone named Ta Mwaya, who seemingly held some important positions within Ramus's government. Most significant, perhaps, was his role as the head treasurer. Speaking to news website The National, Dr. El Agassi reflected on the importance of the find. She said, what makes this tomb unique is the area it was found in. A number of very important military leaders, statesmen, and aristocrats were buried there, most of whom date back to the reign of Ramesses II. Right from the off, this discovery had been tantalizing for everyone involved. But Dr. El Agassi and her colleagues had been confident there was much more to come, so they didn't rest on their laurels upon finding the tomb. They decided to take a good close look at the chamber to see if it hid any additional secrets. And sure enough, it wasn't long before the team had found something. A passageway had been built into the ground, which was certainly intriguing. What could be down there? They needed to find out, but it wasn't so simple. The shaft was really, really deep, and it was filled with sand. 
A week passed before they'd managed to get rid of it all. Still, with the sand gone, someone needed to descend into this mysterious passageway. Dr. El Agassi herself had volunteered for the job, so she was placed on a bucket connected to a winch and lowered down. It must have been a claustrophobic spooky descent, but eventually she made it down. And what she found there left her awestruck. What Dr. El Agassi discovered within the depths was an intact sarcophagus, a real rarity. After all, tombs in Egypt have been left at the mercy of grave robbers for centuries. But here was a 3,200-year-old pink granite coffin, with all manner of intricate markings carved into its faces. Still, none of this is to say the sarcophagus hadn't been interfered with at all. The lid had been damaged, and there was no body inside. Someone, clearly, had removed it long ago. We know there definitely was once a person's remains in there, though, because some resin in there has since been analyzed, confirming it. Without a body, you might think it would be impossible to identify whose sarcophagus this had once been. But in reality, there were other signs revealing who had once been laid to rest here. The carvings on the coffin were a match with the ones that had been on the walls of the wider tomb, which meant the treasurer Ptah Wea had been the deceased. Speaking to British newspaper The Observer, Dr. El Agassi observed it wasn't certain that any given sarcophagus inside an ancient tomb necessarily belonged to the person for whom the tomb had been built. She said the match in this case was very exciting, adding, sometimes the sarcophagus is for a different person of a later period, when the tomb was used in later periods. But this time it is not the case. Another source of excitement for the archaeologists was the sheer importance of Ta Mwia himself. His various titles were etched into his sarcophagus, as laid out in a press release from Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities. Translated to English, the statement lays out his roles as royal secretary, chief overseer of cattle and head of the treasury. He was also charged with overseeing divine offerings to all the gods of Upper and Lower Egypt. Even though this discovery doesn't directly relate to Ramesses himself, it's vital for helping us to better understand what Egypt was like when he was in charge. A leader is just one man, after all, and their rule is dependent upon their subjects. Emily Teeter, an Egyptologist from the University of Chicago, made a similar point to Smithsonian Magazine. Dr. Teeter said, we know things that Ramesses left as official records of his reign, but then we have this much, much larger body of material of people who worked for the administration. We know about the men who were building the royal tombs. We know about the priests, about the craftsmen. It was this enormous bureaucracy. Understanding the lives of people such as Ta Mwia is a great way to contextualize ancient Egypt during Ramesses' reign, but what about the man himself? He was clearly a figure of some importance in his own right, so he's definitely worth focusing on, too. Thankfully, Dr. El Agassi and her colleagues are set to do just that by closely analyzing the sarcophagus. The work of the archaeologists involved in this investigation has been praised by experts around the world. One such person was Peter Der Manuelian from Harvard University, who told British newspaper The Guardian, Saqqara is one of the most important cemeteries for both royals and non-royals throughout the millennia of Egyptian history. This Egyptian team has added yet another important chapter to the history of the site. Dr. Der Manuelian is quite a significant figure within the world of archaeology, so his praise of Dr. El Agassi and her team is not to be sniffed at. And for his part, he's delighted to see that they're actually from Egypt itself. As he said, I'm always pleased to see Egyptian archaeologists making these discoveries. Dr. Der Manuelian went on to explain what he was getting at with that comment about the importance of the team being from Egypt. He said, there's a long history of Western archaeologists doing this work. So it's great to see their own discoveries, and the fact that she's a woman archaeologist, an Egyptian woman archaeologist, is even more welcome. Praise for Dr. El Agassi and her team has been coming from other places, too. Tom Cook was actually on the archaeological site while they were working, shooting a documentary for TV channel National Geographic. Given his proximity to the team, seeing their work up close and personal, he definitely has some insight into how they do things. Cook spoke to The Guardian about Dr. El Agassi individually, describing her discovery as fabulous. He noted, she's a grandmother, she's in her 70s, and she's still going out there doing this really quite hazardous job. 
That's a very impressive feat, and one of which Cook seems keen that people take note. Dr. El Agassi never had any assurances that her work would bear fruit, but she did it anyway. As Cook said, these tombs were so frequently raided that there was no guarantee that anything exciting would be down there. So it was only when they reached that final chamber that they realized something spectacular really was there. Dr. El Agassi's dream discovery as it has been dubbed, looks set to shed light on a very important time in ancient Egypt's history. And for all we know, she may yet uncover more artifacts. Who can say what else might lie beneath the surface at Saqqara, just waiting to be found? There are many sites across Egypt that still hold extraordinary treasures, though. The archaeologists tiptoe through the opening of an enormous structure, which lies in the sands a couple of miles from Aswan. Light flickers against walls smeared with ancient ash remnants of fires long extinguished. As the explorers creep deeper inside, they come across an astonishing sight. This tomb holds secrets which have lain hidden for millennia. The structure had not been explored before, and it was a perfect target for the Egyptian-Italian mission at West Aswan, Imawa. The multinational team worked together to uncover the secrets of the building. To their surprise, they discovered a tomb that held entirely new and unexpected finds. As the archaeologists uncovered the tomb, the first thing that struck them was how large it was. The burial place now labeled AGH-032 had once been used by ancient Greeks and Romans. Even back then, grave robbers had ransacked the place. But the scientists soon found, though, that these thieves had not made off with everything of value and interest. The Amawa project began in 2018 amid a sense of some urgency. Their dig was prompted by suspicions that modern-day grave robbers were at work. It was thought that thieves had begun to tunnel into these ruins in the vicinity of Aswan. The bustling city, a center for tourism in southern Egypt, lies on the Nile River near its first set of rapids. The Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities decided that the best way to combat illegal digging was to start excavations of its own. It did so alongside archaeologists from the University of Milan. Together they are able not only to dig into, but also watch over the necropolis near to the city. Right from its inception in 2018, the joint mission to the west of Aswan has seen cooperation between Italy and Egypt. Most of the money for the program has come from the university, while the Egyptian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation has also lent its help in terms of both official recognition and hard cash. The project has centered on the Aga Khan Mausoleum near Aswan. Of special interest has been the northern part of the catacombs grounds. There you can see a row of structures cut into the rock. Underneath them lies a grouping of tombs, and these have been the focus of the team's recent attention. But what is the purpose of this mausoleum? Sitting a couple of miles from central Aswan, it's the tomb of Muhammad Shah Aga Khan. He was the imam of the Ismaili branch of Muslims. In his day he was an important leader in India, and he played an important role in helping to create Pakistan. Why isn't he buried in India, though? The Aga Khan had a European education and upbringing, which stood him in good stead for the role he adopted in 1885. He became the 48th Imam, a position that brought with it great riches. Suffering in later life from a paralyzed leg, the leader was counseled to come to Aswan to recover. He liked it so much there that he decided to be laid to rest in the spot. An attractive structure in pink granite, the tomb that the Aga Khan had built for himself, is visually similar to the resting places of the Fatimids in Cairo. Sitting close to the St. Simeon's Monastery, it has been a focus for pilgrims ever since the imam was laid to rest in 1957. He was joined there by his wife, Begumam Habiba, a noted philanthropist, upon her death in 2000. Aswan itself has a long history. Back in ancient Egyptian times, it went by the name of Swenet, sitting right on the country's frontier with Nubia. Its name is supposed to come from the Egyptian sign for market or trade or from a goddess who had that name. She represented childbirth, which is appropriate for the gateway to a country. The swan was famed for its quarries, which supplied cyanite. This rock proved valuable for building Egypt's many obelisks, statues, and shrines, not least its many pyramids. You can still see where men cut into the rock three millennia ago, alongside the roadway that ran from one part of Aswan to another. Archaeological discoveries are not new at Aswan. 
In April 2018 a head representing the Emperor of Rome, Marcus Aurelius, was found at Kamambo Temple. Nearby, a few months later, a small sphinx was discovered. This statue, less than 12 inches wide and 15 inches tall, was probably fashioned during the reign of Ptolemy or his successors. Some exciting finds came in February 2021 when a temple from the Ptolemaic dynasty was discovered. Carvings of palm leaves decorated the structure. Along with it was a fort built by the Romans and an early church. This Coptic building featured ovens for firing pottery, perhaps for religious folk living in its four rooms. The Mawa began by exploring about five acres of land, although the necropolis the collection of tombs spreads across a total of about 25 acres. The scientists used a satellite to take pictures of the area. These revealed the locations of something like 300 tombs, which the mission was able to map and start to explore. Back in 2019 one tomb in particular turned out to be a very exciting find. AGH-026 housed at least 35 mummies, alongside clues that the structure had been in use for several centuries. People may have been buried there since the reign of the Ptolemaic pharaohs back in the 3rd century BC right up until Roman times. Minister of Antiquities Colette L. Enani and leading Italian archaeologist Patrizia Piacentini said that the tomb contained a range of people, men, women, and children. A pair of corpses who may have been mom and child were in good condition, but many of the other mummies had been seriously damaged. Still, there was more to come. Also entombed at the site were all sorts of other objects, including death masks, wooden statuettes, pottery and some of the bitumen used in mummy making. The archaeologists were able to find out who had been buried in the tomb. Hieroglyphics revealed that it was the burial place of Tjit, a local tradesman. Dr. Piacentini told UK newspaper The Guardian, it's a very important discovery because we added something to the history of a swan that was missing. We knew about tombs and necropoli dating back to the second and third millennium, but we didn't know where the people who lived in the last part of the pharaoh era were. The academic went on to point out that in its day, Aswan had been a highly significant trading hub. In 2021 the mission redoubled its efforts, and it made a huge and as it turned out unique discovery. Dr. Piacentini and her counterpart from the Directorate of Antiquities of Aswan and Nubia, Abdelmanaim said, revealed the results of five months of excavation. It was a tomb that seemed to house members of one family. What was special about this tomb was that the team discovered it within a building that sits above the ground. Usually, you'll find tombs in the necropolis either under the sands or cut into the hills of rock. The structure that this one sits in had a special purpose, the archaeologists believe. It was a venue for sacrifice. Dr. Piacentini explained to the Live Science website, it seems that, due to its position along a valley of access to the necropolis, this building was used as a sacred enclosure, where sacrifices were offered to the god Knum, in the form of Ares, creator god and protector of the fertile floods of the Nile, particularly revered in a swan. Who better than him could have propitiated the eternal life of those who rested in this necropolis? The god Knum was a figure of worship for about three millennia, from the 2900s BC until the first few centuries AD usually pictured as either a ram or a ram-headed man, he was thought to have created human beings. Because it was believed he brought people to life using clay, depictions of him with a potter's wheel were commonplace. Knum's cult first grew at Herwar, which is close to al ashmtan in central Egypt, but from the 1500s BC, he started to be associated with Elephantine, an island near Aswan. He was soon considered the lord of the first cataract, the nearby Nile Rapids. It makes a lot of sense that local people would have sacrificed to this powerful deity. What made it more likely that the structure was used for sacrifice was that there were marks made by fire on the building's walls, possibly the result of ceremonies that involved offerings. While Dr. Piacentini accepted that the scorching could also have been caused by grave robbers, there were also altars, bones of animals, and the remains of plants found inside. In fact the tomb, which has stayed in good condition despite its great age, has large amounts of debris from assumed sacrifices. The bones are mostly from rams, the animals closely associated with Knum and littered among them are shards of pottery and plates that are coated with hieroglyphics. 
it's the first sacrificial temple that has been found anywhere inside the mausoleum's grounds. The tomb, now labeled AGH-032, dates back to the first days of Greek influence in the area. And while looters had struck back in antiquity, they didn't take everything. Inside something like 20 mummies remained. One body found next to the crypt's eastern wall had a necklace next to him that bore the name Nicostratos. It's speculated that his body was probably dragged out of the tomb by grave robbers. To get into the tomb, you have to take a staircase. Alongside its steps sit carefully sculpted blocks, while at the bottom similar stones also close off the entrance to the tomb. Next to the portal once sat a big vase, which was used for making offerings. Although it's now broken into pieces, it does still contain some remnants of fruit sycamore figs that had been offered to the gods. Inside the tomb, four rooms for burial flank a central space. The burial chambers have been carved into the surrounding rock. In a sarcophagus made of terracotta, archaeologists discovered a child's mummy and some decorated cartonage a sort of papier match covered in decorations in which the mummies were wrapped. Another of the burial sections recessed into the rock above the room, hid a further secret. It was a mummy of another child, and when researchers used X-rays to investigate more closely, they discovered something lying upon the child's chest cavity. It was a plaque. Perhaps an identification for its arrival in the afterworld. The children are just two of the 30-odd new mummies discovered. It's thought that they all belong to one family. And the range of people interred is huge, running from a newborn to some older people, who would have been suffering from the arthritis still evident in their joints. Most of the mummies were found in the four burial sections. Some of the mummies have stayed in very good shape despite dating back thousands of years. Others, though, have had their bandaging and cartonage sliced by the thieves, who may have been searching for valuables buried along with the bodies. They may have used a knife that archaeologists found right next to the mummies. With both the AGH-026 and AGH-032 tombs uncovered, the next stage for the mission was to examine the mummies, roughly 75 of them in all. The researchers hoped to assess the age and gender of the people buried and whether they had had any diseases. To take x-rays, the team brought in a portable machine. It turned out that nearly a third of the mummies in the AGH-026 tomb were kids, aged from newborns to children roughly 10 years old. The rest of the corpses were almost all females. Researchers discovered at least three groups that seemed to be families. A mom, dad, and son all laid next to one another. Close examination of the mummy's bones revealed that they had suffered from infectious diseases and in some cases, metabolic problems. One grown-up had even had one of their legs amputated. And it was certain that they survived the operation, since the bone had partially repaired itself afterwards. Some bodies had arthrosis, a sure sign that they had enjoyed a lengthy life. As per the excavation team's website, mummies were not the only things found in the area. The researchers also uncovered sarcophagi, made of clay or stone, which were still in good shape. They featured vivid coloration and could be dated back to the end of the pharaoh's time and the age of the Romans. Five of the vessels, and parts of others, were put into storage. Among the artifacts found in the tomb was a bowl which had been elaborately decorated. The method is known as a labarbatine, where a ceramic paste is applied before the bowl is fired. Likely the vessel was intended to be used in the afterlife by someone buried in the tomb. Sadly, the pottery had broken into pieces. All sorts of other items were found, all dating to the Greco-Roman period. They included statues of the Ba Bert and bits of plaster, which still showed their colors. There were also panels made out of stone and of course the altars that were probably used for sacrifices to ensure the well-being of those interred in the tomb. The archaeologists are not certain of the tomb's age, but their working hypothesis is that it began to be used in the first century BC. Then one family may have buried their dead in it for three or four centuries. But there's still work to do to discover the full story of the mummies in the Aga Khan Mausoleum Necropolis. Dr. Piacentini told Live Science, the study of the new discovered structure is just beginning. So it seems like she might be kept busy, especially after she noted to The Guardian in 2019, Egyptians are excavating even in places that in the past were not excavated, so they are making more and more discoveries. I think there'll be even more in the future.
Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.